But in the end of the day, it doesn't really matter what your resume looks like. You just want to get that interview. Hi there, I'm Praveen and welcome back to my channel Exploring Me, where I explore different aspects of my life both professionally and personally related to the field of data science. In today's video, I wanted to touch on a topic that we will probably all find ourselves interacting with at some point, which is writing a resume. Of course, writing a resume will vary differently across multiple different fields, as well as they end up being very deeply personal topics. So in today's video, I'm going to be sharing my top five tips for writing a technical data science type resume. Of course, I'm sure there's folks out there who have their own experience or who might actually disagree with the tips that I offer. So I'd love to hear your opinions and questions down below in the comments, as well as any considerations that you keep in mind while you are writing your own resumes. So jumping right into it, my first tip is to keep it very simple. I think in today's world, there are a lot of different platforms that offer resume templates. I would steer clear away from those as much as possible. I'm sure there are some types of visualization type jobs or perhaps some more creative type roles that might benefit from showcasing your skills in that way. I would think for the most part, if you are applying to a data science or data analytics type role, you want to keep it fairly streamlined. I think the two things that sort of irk me the most in those types of templates, first is including a picture. I would not include an image, whether it be in your wider application or specifically on your resume. That being said, I know that in certain countries, it's actually mandatory to include an image. Some places in Europe, I think it is. But for the most part in North America, that's definitely something that is frowned upon. So keep into consideration the geography of where you're applying, but for the most part, do not include a headshot on your resume if somebody really wanted to. Hopefully it doesn't really matter what you look like, but if they wanted to do that, they can head over to a platform such as LinkedIn. I think that's something you wanna steer clear of. Secondarily, I really dislike the sort of graphic or graph type representation of your skill set. On a lot of those Canva type templates, you'll see something where it'll be like a bar graph of your various skills. That's something definitely just don't include. First of all, I think it's really arbitrary. Like what is a four out of five in SQL? That might mean something to you and something completely different to the hiring manager. So I think on your resume, you want to keep it at either you know something or you don't know something and then leave it up to the hiring manager, leave it up to the company to come up with a way to test that skill set, whether that be in a future technical interview or perusing your various projects on perhaps your GitHub repos or things like that. So I think on your resume, you want to steer clear of graphical representations of your skill sets. So keeping it super simple, sticking with a standard font, sticking with one color. I know I've succumbed to including like one additional color to highlight certain things. So just keeping it as simple as possible. I think this is also really important because a lot of the time there might actually be an external company that is hiring uh, for the hiring manager and then sort of bringing the cream of the crop, so it were, to the actual team that's hiring. In that process, your resume might be moving through multiple different emails, multiple different platforms, moving from a Word document to a PDF. And in that, especially those graphical type resumes with a lot of different icons and pictures and things like that might be misformatted throughout that process of being handed over several times. So you really want to optimize your chances of your resume showing up in a professional format. And I think the best way to do that is keep it with simple standard fonts like Times New Roman or Arial. I know they're not uh, super exciting, but just keeping it super simple. And then also having really standard colors like a black and then maybe one accent color. Um, if you really must, and I know I've succumbed to that for sure, but you really want to be steering away from those graphical type elements. That's not something that is going to bring you to the top of the pile. If anything, it's probably going to hinder you. So that's definitely my first tip. Keep it super simple. My second tip is going along with keeping it super simple is really streamlining. I think the stats out there are that hiring managers spend an average of six to eight seconds, not minutes, seconds on an individual resume. So you really want to be streamlining as much as possible. I think you should be keeping your resume to a one pager. A lot of the time technical positions may or may not be asking for a cover letter, but in the case that they do have the option to include that, you have that little bit of extra space to go a bit more in depth. But really a resume is just to get your foot in the door. You're not looking to explain your whole life story on your resume. That's what maybe maybe not even then, but in your interview, you'll be able to have that opportunity to talk about the projects that you're super passionate and excited about. 
on your resume, you really want to just be highlighting the key things that make it um, or make you interesting enough to, you know, have that second conversation with. So keeping it to one page whenever possible, I think is ideal. I think as you go along in your career, you might have additional projects that, you know, that you just can't, you can't justify leaving out. In those cases, perhaps you shift on to that second page. But especially if you are a new graduate, I think that if you find yourself just padding your resume just to make it to that second page, it's not necessary. It's not going to be frowned upon. If anything, I think a one page resume just shows that you know how to prioritize and streamline. So as much as possible, keeping it brief as as you can. So keeping it at one page, I think is ideal. My third tip kind of goes along with that. So in the fact that you're keeping it very brief, I think that you really want to consider sort of the ranking of importance. So like I mentioned, hiring managers are spending six to eight seconds looking at your resume. I think that something you should consider when thinking about what goes at the top versus the bottom, think about just the top. And if that's all the hiring manager sees, is that enough to get your foot in the door? This ranking of importance is going to look different for everyone. It's sort of your greatest selling point. For myself, I like to include a section that is just my technical skill set, and I divide it up into the various skill sets that are required in data science. But for me, if that's all the hiring manager ends up seeing, at least they can know that I can work in the various platforms that they are looking for. For others, their biggest selling point might be their education, especially for new hires. You might not have a ton of experience. Sorry, for new graduates, you might not have a ton of experience. So your education, the fact that you have your bachelor's, your master's in a specific field, or you have certain certificate courses, that is your greatest selling point. That might find itself much higher up compared to someone else who has a ton of work experience. Their work experience might actually be higher up on that hopefully one page resume and their education might be the actual last line. So I really want you to evaluate what is your selling point? What is the thing that if nothing else is seen, you really want to get across, put that higher up and then like I mentioned, don't, you know, pad additional information, but just rank of importance. So perhaps your volunteer project is going to go down at the bottom, but maybe your volunteer project is the only work experience you have that might actually go higher than any additional work experience. Like I mentioned, for me, that is a technical skills breakdown. For you, that might be something else, but that's what I would keep in mind. On to my fourth tip. I think this is a little bit uh, niche to me. I haven't heard this a ton of other folks talking about this, but it's worked great for me. And I've actually seen it in practice as well when I've had the opportunity to look at resumes for applicants. It is including key words from the actual job posting. So when you are looking at the job posting, you'll notice that companies will include their own sort of jargon or the way that they think about these data analysis or data science processes. That's kind of how they'll write it out. I would word for word mimic that on your resume. So in the case that the job posting says something like is able to make data driven business decisions on one of your bullet points in your resume, literally word for word, describe your experience, but include the key phrase data driven business decision making or whatever it might be. Additionally, if they have an order of various skill sets they, that they want you to have. Perhaps that's just the way that they think about it um, in terms of importance. Um, I would include that exact orientation of the skill sets, assuming you have all of them on your resume as well. Now, this sounds like a little gimmicky, but why I believe that this works is that when you are just glancing on, you know, hundreds potentially of different resumes, different applications, you're looking for that connection, something that will allow that applicant to stand out and worth having a deeper conversation with. I think that if you are using the language that that company already uses or that team is already comfortable with, you sort of make that connection. So it's something that seems familiar to them. It makes them think that you have the same priorities as them. It sort of allows for that connection that's worth having that second interview. So as corny as it might sound, I would skim the job application. Don't do it you know, exhaustively, like don't repeat the job application or job posting on your entire resume, but find maybe I would say three to five different keywords or phrases and include those word for word on your application to sort of invoke that connection, invoke that understanding of what the team is looking for. 
uh, what is that phrase that uh, imitation is the greatest form of flattery? I think that's kind of the same source for this tip. So that's something that has worked great for me. I've also found myself when I am skimming applicants' resumes, whenever I see those phrases that my, me and my team use, I think, oh, hey, this person really gets it. And they might have just been getting it from the job posting. So that's something that I would uh, incorporate if you haven't already. This leads me to my final tip, which isn't necessarily a tip about the resume itself. It's how you actually relay that resume to the hiring manager. I think your best bet is going to be not to sort of cold apply, for lack of a better word. I think there are a ton of different platforms online like LinkedIn or Indeed or whatever other platforms, maybe your school uh, platform where you're just sort of sending it in and you are just another name on a page. I think if you can, I would try to circumvent this sort of scrutiny process. So whenever a hiring manager gets like hundreds of resumes, like we mentioned, they're taking like six to eight seconds to skim all of them. And they're very, they have like very quick snap decisions to make, right? And they're going to be a little bit more um, scrutiny that's involved when looking at your resume. So of course, like there's things that you'll notice in my tips, I haven't brought up things like spell check and like, make sure you have powerful statements that are quantifiable. I think these are things that we all know. But those are the things that sort of come into play when you are cold applying when you're just another name on a page. So if you have like a, t like a couple spelling mistakes, you're just going to be written off because again, you're just another name in this like pile of 150 applicants that the hiring manager has to go through. I think in order for a hiring manager to sort of look at your resume more in depth, you have to circumvent this uh, cold applying process. For me, how that's worked is I've been able to network with people I've gone to school with or people that I have previously been in work positions with or have done extracurricular, perhaps I met them at a different conference, something like that. And they've offered to actually send my resume to the hiring manager. I think in those cases, you sort of almost have a stamp of approval already on your resume where it's like, hey, I like that person who sent me sent me this resume on behalf of uh, this other person. So hopefully I'll like them too. And I think in those cases, uh, you'll get a little longer read into your resume, you'll actually be able to they'll actually look into your experience. A lot of those times when you actually have that referral, I think the resume kind of becomes a formality and you kind of jump the process into that initial interview, which is really where you get to showcase your skills and your culture fit and your technical abilities. So I think that as much as this tip really isn't about the resume, I think I'd like to sort of harbor home. You can edit your resume in a million ways. You can make sure it is spelled so perfectly but I think what you really want to get at is that interview that's really what this is all about resumes are sort of a formality so of course keep in mind all the tips that uh, you've heard out there like spell checking grammatical things making sure things are quantifiable statements and also some of the tips that I offered you today which include like keeping it very brief making sure things are ranked in terms of importance keeping that simple formatting including phrases and keywords that hiring manager and the team can relate to but in the end of the day it doesn't really matter what your resume looks like you just want to get that interview so as much as you can I would rely on networking to get your resume in the hands of the team in the hands of the hiring manager who will actually be able to give you some deeper thought and hopefully invite you to an interview I hope these tips have been helpful and something different than you have heard before. I'd love to hear any additional tips that you have down in the comments below. I hope you'll consider sticking around and subscribing and I'll see you in the next one.